Yeah, welcome, Pia, to the No Excuses, No Bullshit podcast. Glad to have you here. How's it going? Thanks for having me, Mitch. It's great to be here. It's going really well. Awesome. Oh, good. Yeah, I think we should maybe start with a small introduction so the listeners know a little more about you. And then, of course, I'm very interested about your champions' routines and habits. Yeah, it would be awesome if we get some insights. Sure. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Pia. I'm a creative coach partnering with visionaries um, looking to birth the dream and the brand, the business. So love it. Love, love to help bring creative ventures and businesses and brands to life, being a part of shaping that with people. Um, I'm also a, a, an author. I'm in the process of writing a book called Welcome to the Creative Club, How to Make Life Your Biggest Art Project Ever. I'm super excited about that. It's uh, both nerve wracking in the best of ways and extremely exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty That's a bit about me. A pretty big challenge, right? Writing a book is not something that's not a small project. No, you got to be no. disciplined with that. Yeah, totally. And yeah, so so what are what are your current habits like for all those those projects? How do you stay disciplined, and also how do you balance? You know which which habits are which habits are for the grind and which habits are for the balance that's pretty I think yeah I think I have like one foundational habit that I really I don't miss I mean don't every once in a blue moon I might but really the one thing that I need to do every morning when I wake up is meditate meditation for me it just grounds me it's the first like I brush my teeth and then I go sit And it's um it's it's a way of connecting with myself before my mind gets too active and busy, especially when there's a lot of things to do. It's just taking a moment to just be and to let it all settle, right? So that is the biggest game changer. Like this morning I woke up because the pre-sale goes live of the book next week. So I had like tons of things spinning in my head. And the temptation was, ah, maybe I should just start doing it. I'm like, mm -mm, you're not going to trick me, <laughs> my mind, right? I'm just going to sit and ground. And then usually I journal, I free write, like I add that afterwards. Today I skipped it. That's cool. It's okay. Some days, I, sometimes I also listen to myself where it's like, you know, I actually, I just need to get this done. But generally meditation and then free writing is, is a sweet combination for meeting myself before the day begins. So that's sort of like the power couple uh, of habits for me. Yeah, that's awesome because I was also talking to a lot of people before about that, about the, the balancing habits and meditation is a very common one. Mm. The, the meditation is really like, and I'm also interested, which, which type of meditation are you doing? Is it a free one or is it a guided one? I start off with... Um, just non-guided just my own like there are two different kinds like more of a focused breath meditation or like i'm body scanning so more kind of vipassana style so in the body and just connecting to breath and then i have sort of a freer meditation where i just sit and i don't have any focus so like a non-focus like, like i just sit with myself and so i kind of go in between those and i usually meditate for around 20 minutes, 25 minutes, half an hour, give or take. Um, but I've been doing this for years. So when I started, and I was just talking to someone about this, actually, when I started, I mean, most people, you, you might think like, oh, I'm just going to sit and be quiet with myself for 10 minutes. It's a training. The mind is like a wild horse that needs to be trained. You know, you train a wild horse is like you give it a lot of rope at first. Yeah. So it feels like it has a lot of room and then you keep shortening, slacking, shortening. It's the same with the mind. So in the beginning, you know, guided meditations are super helpful. That's how I started. So I started with 10 minutes a day and like guided meditation where, you know, he's talking and reminding you to reconnect to breath, you know, blah, blah, blah. and I did that for a while until one day came where I was like, okay, there's, he's, he's talking too much. And then I knew I was ready. Like I was just ready to sit. My horse had been tamed. Um, and then I, and then I sat. And so now because I've been practicing for a while, I can, I can say, and it's not about quieting my mind either. I think it's a good thing to remember. It's um, it's really just about being with whatever is, you mm -hmm. know, without judgment. 
So if my mind is busy, I'm like, oh, okay, she's busy. <laughs> That's all right. You know, no judgment. It's not meditation doesn't have to be any sort of way. Mm-hmm. You just need to show up for it and for yourself. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. It definitely it's, helps to sort to sort the chaos a little. And I also started with, and I'm still at guided meditations because I like, I simply like yoga nidra a lot, yeah, like the guided absolutely. ones. And that's also kind of body scanning. I'm yeah. not a specialist with with the the types of uh, yoga nidra meditations, but um, the ones I do are basically also body scans, yeah. and this really helps me to focus on the moment, to focus on the meditation, because you need to follow the steps, you need to follow the body parts to focus exactly. on. Exactly. But it's amazing. You can get really, really, really relaxed um, with a ten minute session. Honestly, totally. like, no matter how stressful the day was, those 10 minutes are like a fallback. You know, you can you can really fall back on that. And if you're doing it daily, you will quickly uh, experience uh, less stress. Like 100%. 100%. I mean, 10 minutes. Who doesn't have 10 minutes? We all have 10 minutes. We do. We minutes. just need we to all take have it. 10 minutes. You just need to take it. And yeah. when you start to see the impact, I mean, maybe not right away, but the more that you meditate, I think, you know, the point of meditation is to take it with you into every day throughout your, your day, not just in that moment. So eventually you start to feel the impact of that. Um, I also do guided meditation still. So I usually sit like in quiet for at least 20 minutes and then I'll, I'll add a guided because it's a different experience. There are so many good guided meditations that connect you to different types of energy and they can be really fun. So it doesn't have to be an either, or you can do both. Depends how much time I have. I mean, I have already at least half an hour, but if I have some extra time, I'll do more. Um, or if I carve extra time for myself, I'll do more. Yeah. But, but uh, one question I have, do you time it? So do you have a timer? Because the problem I have is if I'm not setting a timer and I have a really good meditation, I fall asleep. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's I'm what gone. In, yeah. yeah, I'm not an affiliate or anything, but Insight Timer is an app that I use. They mm-hmm. have so many guided, like th- thousands of guided meditations, but they also okay. have um, just the timer mm-hmm. where they have like the Tibetan bowls. So it's a very nice thing. So it's not like that. <laughs> okay. It takes you in and out, and so you just—I just set the timer, and it's perfect. Yeah, no, because I—you can one can get lost, or then your mm-hmm. mind starts thinking about time. Like, have I been here for ten minutes, half an hour, and then like, you just lose focus. So the timer. Yes, kind of definitely. Helps. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a good thing. Um, and so that's the the balancing habits. So which habits do you have for the book, for example, for such projects, for all the social media? Like, do you use time boxes or do you have uh, a fixed plan for each day? How do you work off all that stuff without getting crazy? Well, the raw and real answer is that I'm experimenting. Like, I don't have it all figured out. That's like the wrong answer. I have tried, (laughs) I have tried to use like second brain and planned things and schedules and like batching ideas and it doesn't work for me it it, Mm -hmm. when I when ideas are batched they feel stale somehow I can do a little bit of a batch but I don't like months before it has to feel like ripe and real so I I need flow I need structured flow so I need like some kind of structure but I need flow within it otherwise Mm -hmm. I feel too boxed in also creatively doesn't work for me so I think I'm just experimenting right now meditation grounds me when there's a lot of stuff to do so that's huge and then now it's kind of like okay what are the biggest needle moving actions or tasks that I can take that's kind of what guides me so it's like okay if there are two even two even one you know keeping it real simple like what's the most like the biggest needle moving action I can take today what's that one thing that will create the biggest impact I focus on that. And then if I have more space after, if that's been done, it's like, okay, what's number two? So usually I have like three top things because man, there's so many things you could or should be doing that you can easily get lost in the sauce of it all. So I just really try to like focus my energy and be like, okay, it's these things. And no, it won't be everything. And yes, there could be more. Always. This is what I got. 
this Always. is what I got. You know, this is what I got. I'm going to show up with this and it's going to um, put my heart and my, my, my heart into it, my best foot forward. And it's just going to, that's going to be enough. That's another thing. Like, when is it enough? You know? Yes, definitely. And, and I think, um, we should be really careful about not getting lost in all that operational stuff. So what I do is I have a, I have a time box for operational stuff, like mm. answering the amps and stuff, all that, you know, the communication and, and just maintenance tasks. Yeah. But there are also tasks to move the needle forward. So, so getting, improving anything in the program or improving anything in the app and stuff. There are a lot of things in my project but I ensure that there is always something I do to move the needle forward. So, so non-operational task, that's very important for me. So, so as you say, sure. you are focusing on tasks that really uh, move the needle forward, but also um, work off some operational tasks. So it's, it's also a mix. And it's funny that you say you're still figuring it out. You're still experimenting. I think that's also something we all have in, in common. Everybody that is working on something or building up something on, on themselves, experimenting. And I also thought um, the previous system I had is not the, the perfect one. So I adjusted just to realize that the previous system or the previous structure worked pretty well. You know, also something we need to be careful is to not always become like try to become more and more and more and more efficient because as you say we have a limited uh amount of time and and that's what we have you know we we cannot squeeze every bit uh out of our time i think no yeah. and the other thing is the danger of course we need some operational tasks but the danger with operational tasks is they can be big dopamine hits because it's yeah. kind of sometimes easy to check off. Yes. So it's like, oh, I did that, I did that, I did that. But at the end of the day, it, I don't want to say it's empty work. I don't want to put it that far down, but, mm. but it's it's kind of hollow, you know? It's not the most important thing. So sometimes we can get um, sort of tricked by doing all the other things because we can check it off or it feels good, but actually the bigger, scarier shit is what we should be focusing on. And that's just a way to feel like we're making progress. Yes. So we're not actually doing the thing. So it can be a bit of a danger. So I also try to like balance the systems. Of course you need certain systems, especially if you're an entrepreneur to keep business running, right. And to be able to do the things you want to do. But beyond that, like the daily operations can get in the way of sometimes the things you really should yes. be focusing on. I so, mean, in the end, if you're having a lot of operational stuff, you feel busy, yes. but probably you're just maintaining. That's the yes. that's what we should. Well, there's like busy, at. and then there's productive. Yeah, and the the busy trap, oh, it's easy to fall into. Mm. You know, the productive is something else. And again, sometimes I think, why would we stay there? Well, because sometimes it's easier to check, and sometimes we're hiding behind the scenes rather than doing the thing that we should really be showing up for. So the scary it's just, things. It's, it's scary things. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just good to be aware without judgment, you know, just to be aware, like, oh, are you getting are you getting caught in the busy trap? Or are you doing the things that really matter that scare the shit out of you? <laughs> I I like um, that. I like the the words busy, busy trap. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Um and regarding your book and all your projects, do you did you set any milestones for the year? Any any big goals? Would be interesting yes, to hear about. I them. did. Um, for my for my book, the big goals, the those goals are nice and clear. Like I'm working with a hybrid publisher, which is fantastic. Which means that uh, I have great community, great support, editors, mark, marketing experts, all different types of people. Um, but it also means that. I own the rights to the book. So awesome. it's, the rights are mine. Ergo, I need to raise the funds to publish the book. Mm -hmm. So to create the hardbacks, the paperbacks, the audio book, to get some additional edit editing support. And so on next Tuesday, I have a big launch of the pre-sale campaign to rate crowdsource the funds to help do that. So I'm really excited about it. And I'm a bit like, <laughs> it's like a nervous you need, excitement. You need to share that. Share that. I, I will. So Thank I can you. also reshare it 
And thank you. The, it taught me, it's teaching me so much doing the big scary shit. Cause that's what that is to me. Um, it, it's teaching me that asking for support from people is actually making me more generous mm -hmm. because I'm being vulnerable and I'm seeing how many people are like, Oh yeah, of course. And then I'm, it just makes me want to give and support all the different people that are out there creating and trying and stretching and doing really scary shit um, even more. So mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. I really always said vulnerability connects us, but I really felt like I lived it this past week, even though it feels like it's Tuesday. It feels like it's been like five days. Um, mm -hmm. And the second thing is I have so much more compassion and respect for people in the arena. When you're creating and you're it's a Brené Brown quote, like, you know, you can only make impact if you're in the arena, right? So it's mm -hmm. like, if you're creating and showing up and trying and making stuff and sharing it with the world, it's, it's, it can be a wobbly place to be in the arena. It, feels it like, is scary. Yeah. It is scary. super scary. Honestly, like creating all those videos and stuff, this podcast, yeah. <laughs> it scares me. Like, honestly, like every time, even if I don't seem like it now, but you you are vulnerable yes, also like definitely. sharing those videos and but i think that's the only way you can learn right so just True. go out there and try stuff like try to record yourself try to write that book honestly just try make the first step that's what i think is the only way you can you can achieve something bigger absolutely and reconnecting to why you're doing it yes. will really help really help along the way like why am I creating this podcast well if I can just help one person why am I writing this book if I can also just create an impact in one person's life or how it doesn't matter what the number is but one keeps it like it's just just that then it's yes. worth it if that's really you have a bigger purpose or in mind it keeps you going even when you wobble even when it feels super vulnerable like well I'm not it's not just about me actually it's actually about the people that I'm gifting this to that's the intention and it really yes. changes the energy and I think it gives you a lot of courage it's like boom and then here's the thing remembering you're not alone this is what this is teaching me this whole pre-sale business it's like really because more than anything I've had to step out and, and and ask and just you know it's shown me that we're not alone in it like you're in the arena I'm in the arena people watching and creating and making and doing are in the arena and we're all here together so to be able yes. to see each other and go hey good work what can I do to help you you're in the arena, <laughs> arena well fucking done and like hey you know in, in that feeling of community I haven't felt it at this kind of heightened state before as I do right now and I think it's only because I've gotten further into the arena so I'm like oh shit <laughs> um so so yeah. it's teaching me a lot as you said it's about like learning yeah you learn stuff all types of things not only the craft but how to how you want to manage yourself how you want to build community how you want to be in uncertainty all of it all you of learn it. you learn so much about yourself you honestly. do it's because crazy well also what what people don't see is the struggle you know from yeah. the outside the struggle the doubts you have to fight with um yes that's that's something you gotta cope with but on the other side there's the community as you said uh, we are a lot of creators we are a lot of people working together and that's mind-blowing like the support i really enjoy being in this in this whole community and it's i'm super happy that i have such uh inspiring guests like you here in my podcast honestly thank you so much well, thank you so much. You inspire me. Again, just seeing you out there creating, showing up, sharing, even though it feels raw, to help people develop and build habits that help them succeed in whatever it is that they're doing in this life. I mean, that's just beautiful. So you're all you're inspiring. And uh, nice. it's helpful to create when we're creating together. It really is. Yeah, and I would be super happy if we can, you know, in a few months or something or a few weeks, also, after your book is launched, like have another session and, and really talk how it how it went. And we should hop on another call, of course. I'd love that. Well, the pre-sale campaign is up for a month. So we'll yeah. see how it goes. And um we, and yeah, I can I can also share the process. I mean, I am gonna share more about 
about the process of writing a book because I think a lot of people have already asked me like hey mm -hmm. I would love to write every we all have a book in us everyone has a story that they need to tell yes, um so yes. just sharing what that process was like mm -hmm. I think you know could be something that would 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 help um so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna that share bits along the way Super just like awesome. what I'm sharing today, like the, the feeling of, of, you know, being out there, stepping out, stretching, asking, um, reaching out to people and being vulnerable. I mean, that's all that's all part mm -hmm. of it. And that's what you need to do, whether it's a book or a business. Right. Um, or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you're creating is to be able to to open up. Yes. And I think this episode will will change a few minds, I think. And to to finally go out there and stop the procrastinating and procrastination, sorry, and and just do, you know, just do. What can you lose? What can you lose? And if you when you're on a, on your deathbed looking back, exactly. you don't want to be the person that is regretting for not uh, for not doing anything or for have not been doing anything for your dreams you know like i don't want to be that kind of person to be honest no i hear you um yeah. it's like the what if game i spoke to someone mm. today they're like what if i i i fail miserably what if this doesn't work what if i can't get back up i'm like well if you're gonna play the what if game then you have to play the other side of the game too what yeah. if you succeed wildly what if you never try I think it's a really good question to ask yourself. Like if there's yes. something that's really you want to, that's asking to be created, whatever it might be, like mm -hmm. what happens if you don't try to create it? What happens if you don't try to do it? I think that answer is a lot scarier than failure. Mm -hmm. I think the, the regret waits way more yes. than, than just yes. doing it, making yes, the sacrifices. Exactly. So taking yeah. a step back and asking all the questions Yes. And then making a decision. And most of the time the decision is like, fuck it, let's let's do it. Let's let's, let's try it. this. And and to know if any one of you out there are listening, no, you're not alone in it. You know, reach out, DM Mitch, DM me. Like yeah. it's I've just learned so much more about community recently, even though I felt like mm. I was I was part of one, but this just expanded my definition of it. So no one no one has to create alone. Definitely. So everyone that hears it, just text <laughs> us. We are here for the support. <laughs> yes, 100%. Yeah, I'm just watching the clock. And yeah, um, we are we are finished for today. And yeah, it was an awesome session with you. Honestly, like a very inspiring session. And I hope to see you soon. And good luck with your book thanks with the thank book you launch. so much thanks for having me on it was inspiring to be here it's been an honor and i hope to, to do this again sometime yeah would be awesome have a nice day pia you too mitch bye bye